So this is what we're going to do. On the left-hand side, we show Thanksgiving Song 1. And on the right-hand side, we have Japanese movie theme one. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in New Realms, Episode 9, Refractory, Patience, Edit, Fabric, Look Ahead. In this episode, we re-entered by reflecting. We're now into the second week of our declared three-week refractory period where we're kind of working internally with ourselves, figuring out stuff to work on next. Um, We had some further reflections. We edited a stream extract, which we're going to show you in a minute, and we're literally watching ourself while we edit it. So looking at yourself from outside yourself. Um, We worked further with our... uh, Vroid VMagic Mirror Avatar, which is this little green thing up here that we showed you in the last episode. And we worked with the Thanksgiving song that we gave out to people for the holidays. And we learned a lot more about Muse 4. So, so, one of the things we're very proud of as we began and completed this video edit that we pulled out of the last stream... So we're fascinated by this avatar here, right here. Cat ears and red eyes, and their this vlogger, video logger, is being driven by their webcam. So we like that. We think that's a cool thing to do. And so we asked them, "How did you do that?" And they said that they use something called Vroid and Magic Mirror. So. Spoiler alert, we demonstrated uh, v- that they use V-Roid, V-Roid and okay, V-Magic Mirror. We wanted to load the file from the PC using Open Broadcaster System so to put them here, together. We're going to make a new scene, fine-tuning. Now we should be able now. And then now. a final debrief, which was basically so, uh, the recap. We? So this was posted. This is now posted and available if you're interested in having a virtual avatar. So we got that done. Also, we revisited the We Are Here series, and if you may or may not have remember that this was the opening theme. The opening theme we used here is... And then, of course, we used that for the closing theme. So um, to do that, we had to go from, we had to make an edited, a new edited version of We Are Here, just specifically for the, the video. Added timbers and exported blah, 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 and went into Ableton. Uh, we made a new Thanksgiving one score uh, and added the notes by ear, and then we use that to help explore the new features of MuseScore 4, which we're going to talk about again now. So the cool thing about MuseScore 4, one of the cool things, is when you put things like crescendo signs like this, P, pianist, piano to mezzo forte, it honors them now. It will play it back. So we're going to play this whole Thanksgiving song, and you'll hear it get soft to loud, uh, medium to fast tempo, fast to medium, etc. The whole nine yards. Here we go. So that's the Thanksgiving song, and we made MP3s, and we shared it with people for the holidays. And we also watched a video on the making of MuseScore 4, where we learned a lot about why we're calling this meta notation now. 
when you have crescendos and acceleration lines, that in the old MuseScore 3, you had to put a P here, and then you would put an MP here, and then you'd put a... You had to hard code each measure with a new, fat, louder, louder volume marking because it was being exported as a musical instrument digital interchange file called MIDI. And if you wanted to go faster and faster, you would have to put a quarter equals 120, quarter equals 130, 140, 150, 160. But now it'll kind of make that for you. On the other hand, there are certain limitations in MuseScore 4 compared to 3. For example, you notice we're trying to show you two scores side by side, and you can't do that in MuseScore 4. Each score is forced to open in a new window because reasons, and these windows cannot be made any smaller than I'm showing them right now. So, um, you know, the developer giveth and the developer taketh away. Uh, this Japanese movie theme is something we hummed in our head and transcribed, and both the Thanksgiving song and the movie theme were things that we transcribed from a sound recording. So here again, now the other fancy thing about MuseScore 4 is that it's using uh, what is it using? It's using funky um, funky um, what do you call that? Instruments. Thank you. Here. Uh, Muse sounds is a new thing. The Muse brass and the trumpet. So uh, if you use Muse score basic, which we've been doing all along, you get a decent sounding trumpet. But now they're, they have a lot of nuances. So the tr trumpet and the vocals. So we're just going to play this little snippet for you. Here we go. So that's pretty eerie sounding. We don't quite know where to go with that because it was just something we heard watching one of our DVD videos. Now here's another giveth and taketh away thing. What we are used to doing, see when, when you work with with uh, MuseScore, we expect to see the piano key being played down there. But for some reason, some reason, we don't know why. <laughs> It will not, the, the piano keyboard does not animate during score playback. And we posted that on the forum and they said, yeah, 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 we already know that. So, so, so the, for us, as when we write music, we use two windows a lot to, especially if the one on the left is very long and we're scrolling back and forth, finding chords to, uh, to put in position. So we're continuing to learn how to work with MuseScore 4, the benefits, the trade-offs, and, you know, we've already done a couple times where we stayed in MuseScore 3 and then at the end pushed it into MuseScore 4, which is pretty much what we do with Ableton and Reaper. So, hey, it's about cross-dimensional thinking. And remember, we already used 12 plus different apps up here uh, putting all this music together and videos. So... You know, have a tire up. We can deal with it. Um, is there anything else we wanted to show you? We started, began prep for a new um, presentation we're putting together, and we went ahead and updated and retweeted uh, this thing here. The Extended Metaverse Workshop in Zoom. Uh, Avicon kindly recorded this Zoom workshop and posted it on their YouTube channel for us. So we now just went back and added this to our blog post. And we retweeted that today. So now, uh, cross dimensional thinking, now on our blog, which we tweeted and we linked in and we Facebooked more technologies, WordPress, the other three, uh, YouTube video five, SlideShare six, um, where you can actually scroll through here and read them without bothering to open them, and Google Docs seven if you want to see the original high-res slides with speaker notes. No speaker notes.
there they are down there. So that's kind of cool. So that concludes today's episode. Our ideas for next time are to continue working with the scores. We have a new metaphor in mind, music as cloth, uh, which we think is going to help us do some more work with the Japanese movie theme and the girl in the wicker red dress. And basically what that music as cloth is about, we really want to show that to you because we're trying to embed this in our mind, is, 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 is. If we think of the the line of chords, which we call the cadence, as this fabric line, um, one of the ways that we have worked out to, to compose long, like 60 second and longer, for us 60 seconds is plenty of work, and we've the most we've ever gotten to is like five or six minutes. Um, that it's the fabric. It's it's the f fabric on which you then, so to speak, embroider and sew your patterns, i.e. melodies and things, and ornamentation. So we kind of got the idea, uh, uh, because we've been reading books where cloth technology is being discussed. There's a lot, there's, a, there's you know, this one blog post has 25 different kinds of uh, sewing that are involved. And for example, putting padding in on top of the fabric and then sewing over it, um, we're thinking of that as like arpeggios and fast dilly dilly sounds. And then this, the blue would be like the melody that's weaving through the cadence pattern, which is the green. So that's kind of a new pictorial metaphor. We came up with a lot of metaphors in this series uh, so far, including cooking. Shout outs to Silent Lurker, Intrepid Explorer, and a new person, Faithful Viewer. We appreciate you. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back. And do keep on streaming.